Should we uh, watch this Matt Walsh video since we're talking about taxation and we're talking about uh, sure. distribution to the rich? And did you notice something about oh the tax practices? I, practice? Pause it. Can I just These... say one thing? Pause it. I okay. always forget I how flashy his new logo is. It really is super flashy. I mean, honestly, when I look at it, it, feel, it looks like it's a ski resort or something like that. Like here, come, come to Vermont. Actually, yeah. That does look like a, pr a pretty ski resort. Like you can right. see the reflection of the mountains on the on the lake in front of it. It's like Lake Tahoe or something. I know, I know. I want to go there, but then I see Matt Walsh's creepy beard. Yeah, and uh, I, much less so. Yeah, you run for the hills. And did you notice something about the tax brackets? Brackets. These rich people are not all billionaires. In fact, almost none of them are billionaires. There are only like seven hundred billionaires in the whole country. It, they're, billionaires are basically irrelevant. They barely exist. 700 in a country of 330 million people. You could confiscate all of their money, take all of it. Let's do it. You could put a tax okay. rate of 100% on billionaires, and all it right. would fund the government for like a week or something. Cool. Okay? I mean, the government spends... Uh, Sixteen billion dollars a day. OK, a day. So you could you could take uh, Elon Musk's entire net worth. Pause it for a second. Again, I just want to say the uh, this talking point is deployed because um, they want to tie it. They want to say that uh, they want to tie it into this notion of like, you know, to fund a government. We have money to do things. We are sending hundreds of billions of dollars to Israel and Ukraine. You can argue um, that, uh, you know, one or the other is valid or both are valid or both are invalid. It doesn't matter. That money, like, we didn't have a, you know, where did that money come from? We had the money to do these things. Um, and so the, the, the game that they play is that, like, you could tax all the billionaires and it wouldn't uh, fund the government for more than uh, a couple of weeks. It'd be great for okay. the economy. It would right. be great for the economy. There is absolutely no reason to have 700 kings, uh, essentially, um, who, who operate at a completely different plane of existence, who have no notion of, of necessities or needs or uh, operate with um, uh, political impunity because of all this money. We don't need those people. They don't need to exist. There is no, um, there is no sort of natural state where uh, there are individuals who have that much more power in society than other people, except for basically kings who have these uh, large armies. All right, continue. Yeah. Okay, a day. So you could you could take uh, Elon Musk's entire net worth and reduce him to poverty, which I know the left would love to do that. It would fund the government for what? Two weeks? Two weeks. So the billionaires don't matter. Um, they don't, they don't really matter when it comes to dig. It's, it's marginal. It's, a, it, they're spending so much money and there are so few billionaires that it's, it, it's a drop in the bucket. These taxes on the rich are mostly screwing over people who are not billionaires. In fact, a huge <laughs> number of these people are not even millionaires. Okay. Again, the, the top the tax rate, you're talking about $600,000 for a single individual. These are not most. So these aren't even millionaires. Hmm. And while that's happening, hmm. these These idiot liberals are pretending that actually somehow taxes. by some voodoo magic, public school teachers are paying more in taxes than people who have to fork over 40% of their income to the federal government. And, uh, hmm. and, and, you know, we went over this already, but, uh, higher income people, by that I mean, and the IRS means, more importantly, people who make 600K or more, not billionaires, not even close oh to billionaires. Oh my God, pause um, it for a second. Higher income people. Yeah, like, 
Yes, you I get, you know, like we could literally, um, we could literally see, we, we now know how much uh, Matt Walsh is making. Uh, <laughs> it's over $600,000 and he's bemoaning. He's bemoaning and he's got to pay taxes. This is so oppressive to him. We are really getting, what is the percentage of people who make over 600,000 uh, in, in this country? I mean, if the idea that there's only 750 bil uh, billionaires, um, uh, the, the percentage of people making over 600,000, let's see if you can look that up. It, 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 it's not I, the top I, 1%, but it's definitely the top 5%. Yeah, right? I mean, we're talking about um, a, a, a tiny percentage of the country um, who are really just getting and taking it on the chin. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> By that, I mean, and the IRS means, more importantly, people who make 600K or more, not billionaires, not even close to billionaires, um, higher income people pay for almost everything. They get the worst deal by a long shot. They get screwed the most by our current tax system, and it's not even close. Okay. I know it's not, it's like not a popular thing. It's not very populist to say that, uh, to say, oh, you know, boo hoo, someone who makes 600 K is getting robbed by the government. But yeah, you know what? <laughs> yeah. Boo hoo. It like, it's a bad thing. It is a bad thing. It's actually outrageous. No, it's not. No, the it's government not. You is just straight up stealing wanna... nearly half of the. Um, incidentally, the, uh, the tax rate is um, lower for uh those people who are uh married i should say like that's six hundred thousand dollars per individual six hundred thousand per individual this is the entire game this is the existence of daily wire is underwritten by billionaires and millionaires who want to be taxed less but if we want to move on I, people might remember this this is the guy asher edelman who was one of the uh, inspirations for gordon gecko uh, ah. in the movie wall street and this is him in 2016 when he's in he they invited him on msnbc and su he surprised people by endorsing bernie sanders his explanation for what happens when you redistribute money in economy and why you should want a bernie sanders style uh, a policy is i think pretty easy to understand, much more easier than what Walsh just gave us. Why is that? What no question. Is well, I think it's quite simple again. If you look at something called velocity of money, you guys know what that is, I presume. Mm -hmm. That means how much gets spent and turns around. When you have the top 1% getting money, they spend 5 10% of what they earn. When you have the lower end of the economy getting money, they spend 100 or 110 percent of what they earn. As you've had a transfer of wealth to the top and a transfer of income to the top, you have a shrinking uh, a consumer base, basically, and you have a shrinking velocity of money. Mm -hmm. Bernie is the only person out there who I think is talking at all about both fiscal stimulation and banking rules that will get the banks to begin to generate lending again as opposed to speculation. Okay. So from an right. economic Listen, point of view, and, and this is this is you know we talk about this when when we say things like a rich man only buys one loaf of bread a day. They are hoarding money, and not only do we see this in the context of if you give uh you know there's eighty percent of Americans out there that if you give them uh, a tax break or you give them a uh, raise or you give them a stimulus check or you give them a uh, uh, child tax credit, that money is going to go out the door and it's going to go into somebody else's pocket and they're gonna put it into somebody else's pocket and that's what he's talking about with the velocity of money. We also see this dynamic in the context of social security. That's why our, uh, we have a system that was designed to touch on 91% to tax 91% of the income that sloshes around in our economy. But because you have people hoarding money, right? these ultra rich, even these like, you know, even more rich, that money is not touched. It's out of the system, essentially. It's just sitting in some like investment uh, situation. It's just paying capital gains. It's not being uh, implicated by wage taxes. This is, this is the bottom line. Uh, but that, that concept of velocity of money, I mean, you're talking about from an economic perspective. Again, we get back to all governments redistribute wealth. 
The question is, is to whom is going to have that wealth? Is it going to go to a small group of people, 0.01% of the population, 0.2% of the population, 2% of the population, 5% of the population, 10% of the population, or is it going to go to 80% of the population? Is it going to be spread out uh, more evenly? And when it's spread out more evenly, it is far more likely to be uh, spent. And like this guy says, it expands the consumer base, which is what our economy is based upon. Right. And when he when Matt Walsh talks about oh, there's only 700 billionaires in America, like it's not like we're talking about some, I don't know, really small minority of people who get outsized attention from right wing media. In fact, some people make whole documentaries about a really, really small percentage of the population to try to demonize them. And those group, that group of people doesn't have any power whatsoever. The 700 I'm talking about trans people, by the way. Right. Um. The 700 billionaires that he's referring to, you know why that's a focus of the left or anybody that wants a society that's more fair? Because of the insane amount of power that they have. Yeah. That's the difference between, well, exactly, from the money. But that's the difference between right-wing politics about this kind of thing and left-wing politics is because they're going after a fraction of the country that is ver- that has no power. And when people talk about taxing billionaires, that's about going after the powerful to change our society for the better. This is, a, you can look at uh, policy like student loan debt, which we have to talk about in morals uh, from a moral perspective, but economically, the, those payments going to uh, bankers uh, like Mohila and stuff, or they could be going into your local community to help maybe a contractor build uh, uh, up your kitchen or something like that. But instead, we're just leeching uh, all this money through policy to bankers. It's, it's you know, you should, people should think about things this way. Um, we should say uh, that in, I think it was in 2016, the um, 2016, maybe it was, maybe it was a little bit later, the chairman of the Home Builders Association of America said the number one thing that was inhibiting uh, new home building was student debt. That was almost 10 years ago. <laughs> it's only gotten worse. All right, let's just listen to uh, Matt Walsh, um, you know, uh, essentially. I don't know, uh, grease the wheels for his uh, patrons to give more money. Someone who makes 600K is getting robbed by the government. But yeah, you know what? <laughs> yeah, boo-hoo. It, like, it's a bad thing. It is a bad thing. It's actually outrageous. No, it's not. The government is just Based straight up actually. stealing nearly half of the income of millions Taxation of American families. Not steal. Uh, millions of American workers who have worked extremely hard to get to workers. where they are. And they yeah. have families to take care of. Only to get ruthlessly... Ruthless. Punished for it. You're punished. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, they are the victims so, yeah. of the tax system. Okay? I mean, Billion they just are. Victims. People who make uh, 40, Depend 50, 60 K, paycheck. the average American income, <laughs> yeah, they do pretty well when it comes to federal income taxes. They're getting screwed in a bunch of other ways. Everybody is. Every American is getting screwed by the system because we have an incompetent, Capitalism? corrupt, wasteful um uh, oh, government, government. Okay. government and federal ah. bureaucracy that, that screws everybody over. No question about it. But uh, so we're all getting a raw deal. But my point is, when it comes to the federal income tax system specifically, when it comes to a very specific higher thing. income, people have by far the most to complain about. In terms of my neurological capacity. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, it's just such an absurd argument because, uh, yes, within the, um, and I would not use the word complain, I would use whine. The, uh, within, uh, if you're looking specifically at the top federal uh, um, uh, marginal income tax rates, then uh, people who are making the most amount of money can whine about it the most. But if you look at every other metric within society, the cost of health care, the cost of, uh, of education, the uh, lack of access in some instances to um, uh, health care or to a high quality education, the um, implications, the percentage that rent takes from all those people who are not making that money, the size of the percentage, like the percentages of, li- of, of just survival, the cost of just survival is so much higher 
for people who make less than six hundred thousand, I'm only using that figure because he does. That less than six hundred thousand dollars, then over six hundred thousand dollars. That's just the reality of it. And he could say, "Oh, well, but that, that's the private uh, market." No, no, that is how we decide to set up society. There is no law that says that medicine needs to be commodified. Well, I guess there is actually uh, <laughs> a law, but it's one that we could change. Um, it's certainly one that we could change. We could add new laws that say we're going to decommodify health care. We're going to decommodify housing. We're going to decommodify the cost of child care. We're going to decommodify um, the cost of home health care. We're going to decommodify uh, nursing homes. I mean, these are all things that we could do. It's just a question of the choices that we make as a society. That's it. These are all things that can be done. We cut child poverty in nearly in half over the course of a 12 month period. That is proof positive that we could do all these things that we're talking about. Yep. We just choose not to. And in some instances, folks like Matt Walsh will uh, cry about it and say that it's unfair. And then in other instances, it's just like, it's not possible to do. How will you pay for this? We, you, you can pay for it. We've done it. We, we got rid of child poverty by nearly half in 12 months. It's absurd that we even like can, can have these arguments with a straight face is what we're capable of doing. But for Matt Wallace, instead of whining about that, how come we didn't continue to do that? He's whining like people are making over $600,000 really taking it on the chin in terms of federal income taxes. Yeah. <laughs> it's I'm a crying mess. for them. All right, folks. We done? I guess Matt Walsh doesn't want George Soros to be taxed. That's, that's kind of suspicious. <laughs> John in Omaha, if we taxed $100 billion from the top wealthiest people, it'd be $1.5 trillion, and they'd still be billionaires. <laughs> hey, folks, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and check out our daily show. We do it every day at 12 p.m. Eastern for about two and a half hours. We even take phone calls. You should check that out.